we are finally back on Reventuli Coast today to continue working on our Reventuli Coast single player only diamonds challenge and we're gonna take a different approach today even if only slightly. There's always this thing in Call of the Wild and I think in hunting games in general where you find the things that you want when you're not looking for them so we're not going to just specifically target the new geese species and raccoon dogs. We're gonna run around hunt whatever we find and see if that leads us to anything we're missing. And rather unexpectedly, it looks like we'll be starting off our hunt today with a Eurasian lynx, which perhaps is fitting, since the last time we came out here we actually got a max score one. So we do have the 243 handgun. I mean, this one's actually a better estimate. And now because of the new spook rate is, this shot will spook the one that's further away, but I kinda like our odds better, especially given our weapon, of just getting that one. And as we head up here, I want to dive into the theory of it sometimes being better to not actually hunt the thing you're targeting. Because naturally respawns are always a good thing and shooting more of the species you're after leads to more respawns, but the idea here is that who's to say that there's not a diamond of the species we're after, raccoon dogs or those geese species already on the map, and if we're always hunting the same areas, it would be easy to just constantly miss out. So the concept of this hunt is to intentionally or otherwise pass through some of those areas that we're not always checking, just in case there's maybe a heavy track or an opportunity to spot one of those things that maybe is exactly what we need and we've been missing. And in the meantime, of course, it also gives us the opportunity to maybe find other cool things like that last hunt, where we had an orange raccoon dog, a diamond lynx, and a diamond, I think, Eurasian teal, all from actually targeting those things. So this time, we'll be in other areas, and I think that gives us an opportunity just to explore more of the map. But two animals down now, a silver white tail to go along with our lynx, both silvers in fact, and we're kind of just working our way down the west side of the map currently. We'll have to go through some raccoon dog territory or just this hunt wouldn't make any sense. But we're going to try to be kind of on the outskirts of it. Areas that we maybe don't always hit. Well, that's not a bad size. Link's got a mythical out there. I suppose we'll go ahead and go for that shot. I actually heard a raccoon dog warning call. And I'm sure it's somewhere near these links and that is what's spooking it. But that'll drop that guy. I would like to think because raccoon dogs travel so slowly, if we kind of take our time moving down through here, we should be able to find whatever one made that warning call and hopefully get it down. There's a lot of good links in here though. Another level seven. I wonder if we can get that shot. Should be able to. That's a long shot too, so maybe we can just continue working on links respawn to get some more good ones while we're out here hunting other things. Again, that was what we were doing at the time that we got the Max 4 one. We were just chasing raccoon dogs and that ended up showing up instead. There's a ton of birds down here too, whether it's the golden eye, the geese, I think all three species of geese are in this general area. What is the molting? There's a molting rare for mountain hare. So that's always something to pay attention to. Level seven gold at 25.44 and I think our mythical is right over there. He'll come in a little higher scoring at 26.16, but we actually missed the lungs. Shot right through the spinal cord. I thought maybe dropping him at that range didn't make sense, but that'll explain it. And now, hopefully, with some of those smaller tracks eliminated, it was probably this. Four to six kilo female, but that doesn't mean there's not others around. Well, I'm guessing one of these two are it. They both have the correct weight estimate. And we'll probably try to get them both. Still kind of operating under the assumption that it may matter whether or not you shoot the female ones. Same idea as when we did the red fox grind. Because they often travel in pairs, you may only get the respawns when you shoot both from the pair. I really don't know if that's a thing, but it seemed to result in more male red fox. And why not do it for the raccoon dogs as well? I don't know where that second one got to, but again, they don't go anywhere that fast. So we should be able to get on it. As for this one though, should have been probably a double lung shot, was that it or a rabbit? Something just flew out of there, anyway. This one was the black white fur type, double lung and liver in fact. And we'll try to hurry up here and find that other one. 
as predicted, didn't go that far very fast, so the shot angle is far less than ideal. If we had a repeating rifle of some kind, the easy thing to do in those positions is go for a shot whether it's a great angle or not, and then quickly make a follow-up because they kind of fall broadside. But luckily, the 243 being fairly powerful even for a handgun, got into a vital of some kind, and it made it all of one track past the hit location. That was just edge of the left lung? Great for a type that time. And hopefully that's a sign that we're into kind of those outskirts of Raccoon Dog territory. So we're going to stay north here, not get too far down there, because that's where we typically go. So this was in no way, shape, or form the actual plan here. But we just sort of are currently passing by our goose setup. And there's a bunch of both Tundra Bean Geese and Grey Lags out here. I thought there was a level 3 male. That's him there. Maybe we can get a couple of males. I much prefer to shoot things with the shotgun out of the air, but especially when the opportunity is here, I don't think we'll pass it up. That's going to be that one. Well, that was... Did we get the right one? The one that I tried to shoot, like, ducked? <laughs> and then we hit another one? Maybe that worked. To further clarify, when I say the one I tried to shoot, the one I thought was the other male and was not, then ducked, so I don't know what we hit with our follow-up shot, but... We'll grab this one first. That is a level 2 female, so either way, we didn't end up getting the right one there. Even still, maybe a chance for a rare... I don't think we've had any kind of rare geese, and they all look very good. This one was kind of mid-run there. We got it in the sternum. 2.58 level 3 male. And hopefully at least that will help us out with the respawns, and maybe that's something to consider. Like, passing by this area every now and then. Because it's not like we came over here and sat for five minutes. Geese were actively attempting to land just as we were passing through. So maybe that's one way to get some bonus geese kills while also going for raccoon dogs. Well, possible Hall of Shame goose down. That was a level one male. And you know, those count just as much as ones we shoot actually at the setup. Anytime we can just get one out of the air. That works. That is a bronze male. Just barely, but that's a new species for the Hall of Shame. We have not had a bronze male Tundra Bean Goose before, so I suppose that's a Trophy Lodge edition of some kind. 265 meters in the wing. We'll take that every time. Like I said, gets us a respawn and adds to the Hall of Shame. Well, it's only taken an hour and eight minutes, but we finally found a male raccoon dog which maybe serves as a bit of confirmation that the areas that we're primarily targeting are actually the right places to be. But even still, I think it's going to be good to continue on the way that we're going. And what I'm thinking of doing now is as we move to the eastern side of the map, there's an area that we definitely pass through, but I don't think we're as thorough as we could be. So little silver there, but to take a look at it, it's all these lakes here. Typically, we may like pass in between, go north of them, south of them as we're doing now, but what I want to do here, because we are not necessarily trying to get just a ton of raccoon dogs specifically, is kind of weave in and out between the lakes and cover a little bit more of that ground. Since there's the chance to maybe get other species in there too, I think that kind of works in this format better than others. This is one thing that I'm a lot happier to see now than when we were grinding for them. Just got a level 2 black grouse flying over. And as we're weaving between these lakes, there's been a lot of, like, low-level male raccoon dogs. And for the sake of not having 10 of those in the video, I've just gone ahead and shot them and they've not been included. But I think that'll be good for respawns. And as we just come up through here, got another one that fortunately didn't make it that far. Just a couple of other things to continue to get. The nice thing with these two... Their rares are really nice. The leucistic looks fantastic. The melanistic is almost more of like a piebald look. Got another one flying away out there. That looks off, but I think it's just the sun. We'll scoot through that way and make sure that it's not a rare based on the serve veg, but I like that we're kind of running into some other stuff here too. Well, small victories, I guess. That may be a Hall of Shame gray lag now. No sign of any of the surf edge from that black grouse, by the way, but I think it was a common. And we can only hope down the road it'll make a difference for 
basically the opposite end of the spectrum. Bronze again though, 2.76, we're so close in both occasions. But I guess that is what makes them a level 1, so multiple Hall of Shame geese today. And at least that adds some variety to the Hall of Shame Lodge. So as we reach the end of our hunt here, kind of fitting we have a Caper Kaylee, given the fact that they were just added to the Hunter Classic. But if we can make that shot with the 20 gauge, potentially a level 2 diamond, I think that's a thing for them. But even still, we do have a trophy lodge to go back and visit, even if it is just the Hall of Shame. And I kind of forgot, it was only recently that we had the three bulls over on Leighton Lakes for the Hall of Shame, two moose and an elk. So go figure, adding two new species to that lodge with the geese from today. But then one last animal here from Revan Tooley Coast. You know, <laughs> almost ended up being level two diamond, 0 0.02 shy. Not half bad, we did it at both times with two pellets each. Not the best, but it got it down. So let's jump back to the lodge then and see where we can add the new Hall of Shamers. You know, I like that you really can see the size difference between the two species as well. Greylag on the left and Tundra Bean Goose on the right. They're only, because they're scoring kilograms, they're only about half a kilo, maybe a pound difference. But I guess the gray legs just have like a bigger wingspan and body in general. I do like though, as we continue to work with the Hall of Shame, even these little plaques around here are starting to get filled up. I didn't even know. We have a Canada Goose too, so all three geese species now represented in the Hall of Shame. And hopefully our efforts today will help us with our single player challenge over on Riven to the Coast. More than 20 total kills. I don't know how many are in the video. As I said, a lot of those small raccoon dogs just got cut out because it's pretty much the same thing over and over. But I'm enjoying just getting back to it, finding some of those things like the moose grind, like this Reventuli challenge that we've been away from for a bit, and just getting back into them and enjoying them once again. But anyway, that is going to do it for this video. So as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.